In November 2000, heavy rains caused some of the worst flooding since records began. Many rivers, including the Severn, burst their banks, causing widespread disruption and damage. In the past, people have been quite clever about avoiding these disasters. This is Worcester, and the cathedral and the old town are much higher than the rest of the city. That's because they've been built on a river terrace, out of reach of the floodwaters. Since then, the town has grown, and there's been nowhere else to go, except down onto the floodplain, closer to the river. These Victorian houses risk getting flooded every winter. Building on a floodplain also changes the way the land works, a fact that isn't always understood. When rain falls on open countryside, the ground acts as a big sponge, soaking up a lot of the water. But when the land is built on, the paving and tarmac stop water seeping into the soil. Instead of the water ending up in the soil, it's swiftly drained through pipes into the river. That's okay in normal conditions, but when it's very wet, the extra runoff can tip the balance, causing a river to flood. The situation is really serious, and at the moment, no one seems to have an answer. South of Gloucester, the risk of flooding decreases rapidly because the river starts to widen and it quickly develops into an estuary. It's one of the biggest estuaries in the UK. At this point, it's already two kilometers wide and south of the narrow point where they built the bridge, it's even wider still. The river here is tidal and has the second largest tidal range in the world. The difference between the high water mark and the low water mark can be as much as 15 meters. And when the tide is out, huge expanses of mudflats are revealed. Many rivers in the UK, like the Thames, the Humber and the Forth, end in a wide estuary, and they all present the same problem. You need a long bridge to get from one side to the other. Here on the Severn, there isn't just one bridge, but two that carry traffic between England and Wales. South of the crossings, the river becomes much deeper, which means ships can come in. This has attracted industry to the cheap land around the estuary, and the shoreline is chock-a-block with factories and dock facilities. I'm just surrounded by industry. There's a smelting works over there, several chemical plants over there, an LPG and oil terminal down there, and just over here is a container terminal for imports and exports all over the world. Half a million cars pass through the port each year, and the £27 million refit of the neighbouring Portbury docks should ensure that traffic through the area continues to grow. By the time it reaches its mouth, the Severn is 13 kilometres wide. The river looks like the sea. Having started as a trickle in the Plinlimon Hills, it has run 350 kilometres. And by the time it reaches the sea, it carries over 9 billion litres a day. Quite a transformation.